Okay, so, right. so good, good afternoon, Jim. So um, my name is Vipada. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jim Crawford. I'm the senior scientist for atmospheric chemistry at NASA. Okay, so um, so what are you guys doing here, like with all the NASA guys? <laughs> so we've been doing work on air quality for a little over a decade now. Mm. Before that, we worked on atmospheric chemistry in remote areas, but moving towards the cities has been an important part of what we do. Okay. Uh, why does NASA do airborne measurements? Uh, yeah. It's because we need to know that the satellites we put into orbit can be interpreted properly. Uh, mm. The look from space is not exact. Uh -huh. It needs to be understood what's happening in the whole atmosphere beneath the satellite. And we're, we've been working with partners across Asia. And so we know that right now, Asia is an important part of the world to study air quality. Uh, there's a lot of economic growth. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of population growth. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of opportunity in Asia, and with opportunity comes pollution many times. And so if we can come and work with Asia at an early stage, then we have a chance to help improve mm. air quality. Mm. So a big part of coming here is that uh, the Koreans launched a satellite called GEMS. Mm. And that satellite sees more than 20 individual countries. And so each of those countries can benefit from the GEMS data, but how many of them know about it? How many of them are using it? Uh, Having worked with Korea uh, eight years ago, uh, they wanted us to come back and just go to Korea, but we convinced them that we need to move to other Asian countries mm. and really begin to grow the community that does this work. So we did not just go to each country to ask to work there. We're very connected scientifically. Uh -huh. And so I know scientists from Thailand and from Korea and from the Philippines. Mm. And so as I mentioned, there are 20 countries yeah. under GEMS. Why Thailand? Yeah. So we chose the countries that were the most prepared to accept the information, the most prepared to learn how to begin doing these types of measurements. Mm. Uh, in 2016 in Korea, mm. after the mission was over, they began to really accelerate their airborne measurements. And now they're quite capable. Uh, they always had good modeling and good <laughs> ground measurements, but Thailand also has a very good ground system for measuring mm. air quality. Uh -huh. They also have a number of efforts to look at mm. uh, forecasting of air quality. Uh -huh. So if we can come and add value to that and improve mm. capability, uh, it means that Thailand will be stronger and uh, yeah. and have a good path towards yeah. clean air. Yeah. So it's just not only like you found the statistic that we are not in a good shape of like um, the air quality right now, but it's also we you also consider that we have a ground station. We have yeah. like a lot of of data that yeah. we can provide you to validate with the satellite and everything yes. and airborne. So we build yeah. on the effort you already mm. have in place. Yes. There are other countries in Asia that have terrible air quality, mm. but they don't have the infrastructure and, and scientific base yet to host us and really take advantage of what we can do. Mm. But Thailand is very strong. Okay. And so being here uh, <laughs> just makes us glad to be able to contribute in a way that will make a difference. Okay. So why like this time, March, like 15 yeah. to 25, why this So it's, it's kind of lucky a little bit okay. in that uh, when, we, when we worked in Korea the first time, it was in the pre-monsoon, it was May-June. Uh -huh. But they were also very interested in us looking at the wintertime haze problem that they had. Okay. And so they asked us to come in February. Mm. But in looking at the other countries, there's also the dry season which uh -huh. creates a lot of burning at the same time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it interesting yesterday when in one of the presentations, someone called this summer. We think of summer as June, July, August, but here I, summer no. is February, March, April, kind of, you know? So yeah. it was very interesting to me the way that that season is described. Uh -huh. but, but, it, but it was very fortunate that winter haze, dry season in Southeast Asia and other things uh -huh. uh, pollution peaks mm -hmm. in Asia in this time period, yeah. even though it's for different reasons. Yes. So we wanted to be here when, when pollution is peaking, and I think I think we did yeah. over the past You're coming in a good time. good time. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. So you fly with two planes, with DC-8 That's and correct. G-3. Yeah. So um, like, how is different between two planes where you have to fly two planes? So the G-3 is able to behave like the satellite, but see much finer scale. So that's very useful. But even with the satellite measurements and G3 measurements and ground-based measurements, they only measure a few things. And so if I try to study the atmosphere from the ground level, it's very hard. You get, you get good information on exposure, what people are breathing, but that's influenced by what happens above the ground too. As the, as, as the air mixes and the pollution moves around, it turns out that particle formation, 
and ozone formation are more efficient just above than down low. So if I try to calculate pollution formation rates just based on the surface, I will usually get the wrong answer. Okay. So if we can take an aircraft like the DC-8 and we can travel up and down and capture the distribution of pollution, ah. now it becomes a much clearer situation. Ah, that's why you have to go up and down. Yes. And so the models that want to predict, we want to see if they also have the same distribution vertically. Mm. Because if they don't, it means that their answers may be misleading. And so it's a great way to determine how to validate the satellite, how to test the models, how to move us forward in our ability to understand the air quality. So you see that there's too much PM2.5, you yeah. see that there's too much ozone, yeah. but, but with the measurements you have, you can't see the cause. Mm -hmm. We measure more than 100 different things from the DCA, yeah. and we measure them above head and with the, with the low approach yeah. all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. This information, although short time period is, is possible, becomes a great launching point for uh, assessing current model capabilities, mm. for future interpretation of satellites, and, and improved improved ability to understand their quality. Oh, okay, this is so that's so interesting. Yes. So, so how was it like? You fly two flight already. Yes. Yeah, we successful two flights. So, how was it? Like it was. I would say that it's close to what we expected in terms of the distribution of pollution. Uh -huh. So, you know. As you move from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, you begin to see a change in mm. what's happening. And one of the big questions is when the smoky season happens, okay. how much of Bangkok is, is being influenced versus just the local Bangkok emissions? We're going to have some indications of that mm. with this data set. We were very lucky over the past two flights to hit the situation where the smoke was peaking, it's at its greatest. Mm. Now the weather's going to come through and it's going to uh, you know, maybe clean things out a little yeah. bit. But that view is also very important because we want to see Thailand under different conditions. Yeah. And so maybe when we look at Bangkok on Wednesday or Thursday, we will be seeing truly just Bangkok and what's happening. Mm, okay. Um, so for flying, so I know that there will be a lot of data, a lot of pre -pro like yes. processing after this. So what do you expect to have like after all the flight? What do you so, like? What are you gonna do? What is your plan? So you you already saw at yesterday's science meeting. We already have data from the first flight, uh -huh. and so the data comes in very quickly. It's not ready for for fully analyze. It's not ready for science analysis, but it's still good enough to start thinking about where are we going with this. And so, what we're going to need to do is, when the data is ready at the end of the summer, we're going to need to start looking at how it compares with the models. So the model teams can already be. The models have a forecast, mm -hmm. and then they have uh, what we call, the models do two runs. So, right. so right now, the models can, be, can begin to be building upon their forecast mm -hmm. with analysis runs. Okay. And so after the forecast, we get more information. And so they can do mm -hmm. a better calculation. Yeah. But that calculation can still have emissions that are wrong, and it can <laughs> still have other things that, yeah. that's, you know, if the model domain is not big enough, there can be external influences that they don't capture. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we get the data ready, the models should also be ready to start comparing with the data. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so when we get together again in January, we can have a lot of discussion about, well, how good are the models? Mm -hmm. And if we want them to be better, what should we be trying to do? Yeah. And, uh, and if we want to improve air quality in Thailand, what are, there are always a lot of options, but some options are easier than others. And so mm -hmm. we can ask, what sources did we see? Mm. Uh, and so whether it be the vehicles in Bangkok or the smoke from the agricultural fires uh -huh. or the industry and shipping in the, in, in the ports, uh -huh. all are making a contribution, but how much? Mm. And when you put them all together, what changes are easiest to do in the near term and what, are, what do you have to put off for a longer time to do this? Uh, I see. So between the G, DC-8 and G3, so it's like DC-8 um, have to like fly, fly like misapproach, yes. like low and it up. It has to go up and down, but also get all the way down to the surface. Yeah. It can only fly down to a thousand feet okay. away from airports. Mm -hmm. But if you look at some of the soundings that we create, a lot happens in the lowest thousand feet. So capturing that last bit yeah. makes a big difference. People also worry that when you fly into an airport, that the airport itself is creating too much pollution. Mm. But what we've seen in Manila, and in Seoul, and also here in Bangkok, okay. is that the changes from day to day are much larger than can be explained by the airport. We believe ah. that we truly see the city okay. and how it changes from day to day. 
Oh, okay, so it, maybe it's not caused by the airport. Maybe it's caused by something else, right? We, well, the airport does play a role, yeah. but we're seeing that that role does not cloud the picture in terms of the bigger really? changes, the, the urban scale and, yeah. how, and how it changes. That's so interesting. Okay. What, do you have anything you want to say to Thai people? I don't know. Okay, um, let me ask this properly. Uh, I would say this. Okay. I would say, you know, Thailand is a beautiful country, yeah. and the people even more so. So friendly, so hardworking, so welcoming. They deserve better air, and we want to help them find a way to yeah. improve it. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, it's good. So it's like coming here, you will find our like cost, like where exactly? Not 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 not, not like exactly, but we will improve the model for the gem satellite, yeah. and then we can see like monitoring or even forecasting like our pollution to be a better idea through, through satellite, right? Yes, and, and so once you improve those forecasts, a big problem is getting people to be even aware of the air quality, to pay attention to the air quality. Yeah. And improving the forecast, improving the information system, uh, by doing these flights maybe getting people to recognize and pay more attention to air quality can help with the uh, the will of the people to ask for those improvements. All uh right. -huh. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much for today. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.